Hello. Hello. G'day, Rick. Yeah. How you doing, mate? It's Michael Persh calling from Adelaide. Cat Swinton set me up for a quick chat about your uh, your upcoming season at the Cabaret Festival. Yeah. Can you just hold on one sec, please? Certainly. Thanks. That's all right. How are you doing, mate? It's lovely to say hello. Yeah, likewise. And, yeah. and very excited, well. very excited that you, you and John are doing something again, very special for us in Adelaide with the uh, the Brothers Angels and Demons uh, season at the Cabaret Festival coming up in a couple of months. Yeah, it's something quite different for us. We, we're uh, we're hanging out to do it. We, we rehearsed for it last week, and it was fantastic. The, you. Adelaide, you've, you've looked after us very well in recent years. There's been a lot of special things happening with the Angels and the Brewster Brothers in Adelaide. The, the, the Symphony of Angels is, is, I guess, the first thing that pops into my mind that it was really something very special for us to have that here. Yeah, it was for us too. You know, anything we do in Adelaide is special because we, that's where we all grew up. And, and, and well, also, you know, when you say we've been good to Adelaide, we can say the same. It's been good to us. And and also we were very early in the piece, the, the one of the uh, the first cities in Australia to see uh, to see the the wonderful Dave Gleeson up with you guys, and and that was great fun as well. Oh yeah, yeah, no, he's uh, he's an absolute gem. He is a great performer, great singer, great guy. I don't want to speak too highly of him though. <laughs> <laughs> give him a big head, you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> don't want to give him one. No, he's a uh, yeah. Very straight shooter, Dave. We, we love him. So, so the, to, to put... I, I, I'm guessing that to put a, a cabaret show together like you're going to do for us in Adelaide, if people have seen the Brewster Brothers performances and, and what you do it, and, and how you take that into the jug band context as well, it's not really that far of a push, I guess. No, it's not. Um, it's really... Uh, I haven't had much to do with it, and I'm, I'm still learning... What, it, what it's actually going to entail, but it, it seems to me that it's a basically uh, running through the musical history of of John's and my lives, um, and so it does it does uh, it revolves around the music, but it also tells the story, I guess. Uh, you know, going right back to and the, the Jug Band was the first band that we had together, so. Um, We'll get Spencer along, our, our uh, wonderful banjo player who still lives in Adelaide, and um, uh, do, do a couple of joke band tunes and some uh, some Brewster Brothers songs and some Angel songs. But you're right, Rick. There is there is so many stories, and and even to go back to the Moonshine Jug and String Band, to to even at the time when you did release singles in Adelaide, to have a, a jug band in the the seventies release a single was was would have been fairly much unheard of anywhere on the planet, I would think. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's so. Know. It's so wonderful for people to have the opportunity. Like I said before, you do do a little bit of that with the Brewster Brothers, I know. But for have people the opportunity to see you guys do that and, and see how the, the you guys have evolved from back then, it really is... people. I, think, I don't think people appreciate what wonderful music, jug band music, still is. Oh, it's, it's the best. It's just it's incredible music. It's real party music. And, um, and for me... Playing the washboard, it's uh, it's got to be the the most relaxing instrument I've ever played, and I still love picking it up every now and again. And we usually do it at some point in a Bruce Brothers show. Um, just great instrument, great music, great feel. And and that that will surprise people because seeing you play the washboard, 
you have a big smile on your face, which which people aren't used to seeing you when you're you're playing in the concept of context of the angels so often. Yeah, look, uh, I probably yeah, I, I I morph, I guess, depending <laughs> depending what instrument I'm playing, um, and it's all just where the instrument takes me. If I'm playing guitar and standing up, then the most comfortable thing in the world is to stand still. Um, playing a piano, I, I tend to be pretty pretty static as well. And that's how I was always taught as a pianist, learning. You know, my wonderful musician father used to uh, walk past the piano when I was learning, doing my, my pieces for the next exam or whatever, and he, say like let the fingers do the talking like <laughs> and um and of course his other favorite expression was make the melody sing <laughs> Which is, uh, and that's the biggest one I, I took into uh rock music when we when we started a rock band and I, um decided that I wanted to be the lead guitarist of the Angels. Uh, I knew bugger all about playing guitar and even less about playing lead guitar. Uh, all I had was this classical piano background and I heard her saying, make the melody sing. So I was writing melodies left, right and centre and then working out how to play them on a guitar. And and that, that advice is obviously you took that to heart because many people that I've had the pleasure of speaking to on the on the program that have uh, that have played in the Angels and know your your work, including Dave Gleason most recently, says that uh, have all said that that your your guitar solos are so melodic and uh, and Dave Gleason even mentioned that well, one of the things they used to do on on the road with the Screaming Jets was have competitions on the tour bus to whistle your lead breaks. You're kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it was a beautiful thing. I thought it was magic. <laughs> hey, I take that as a big compliment because my my whole philosophy used to be that um, that a um, that a guitar solo should be a melody that you can walk away singing. You certainly achieved that on on too many occasions to count, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> on the subjects of stories, I, I when the the. Uh, I think when the the symphony show was on Adelaide, I, I had John on the show, and one of the things he alluded to was a story about you guys when you were young, and it was something about him stopping you drinking kerosene when you were two years old. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yeah, it's true. Oh, I've been told it's true. I don't remember back that far. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was two or three, and he found me with a... It was the old days where... where you see, we were on... Um, on kerosene, there was no power down at Victor Harbour, no no electricity. So, 44 gallon drums and flagons of kerosene, and it was clear liquid. It was before they introduced uh, blue. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the people yeah. could identify it as poison. Uh, so I, I just picked up a flagon, apparently, uh, which had a little bit of kerosene, clear kerosene in the bottom and drank it thinking it was water I guess <laughs> wow. next thing I was rushed to the hospital and stomach pumped out you were a very lucky boy then yeah John, John's found me a few times in precarious situations <laughs> Once, uh, yeah, when I was about 80 he, uh, he found me up at the forbidden building site where my father had, had told me I was definitely not allowed to play there ever. It's dangerous, <laughs> which of course it was. And I pulled this big sheet of thick steel plate down on on me, Good as well. and uh, just about chopped my foot in half, <laughs> broke every bone in my foot. And I was crawling home, and John found me there too, and we stumbled home together. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was so petrified of of uh, disobeying my father that I told him not to tell anyone and I lasted a few hours I think <laughs> finally told him no, you better tell him <laughs> oh goodness and, and and that's I guess the thing that that 
will come out, uh, I think, be very evident when people come and see the show at the Cabaret Festival that, that you and John are not just brothers in the sense of... But you, you ha because you, I guess, have such a musical sense together, it's it's very special, the relationship you two guys have. Yeah, that's true. It's, uh, um, I guess there aren't that many brothers who have a lifetime of working together. And, um, you know, that's been uh, a real roller coaster. You know, the early days, we were still... Uh, young blokes fighting, fighting to get their opinions heard. We were up against each other every day in the uh, in the work situation. You know, musical ideas. Uh, when uh, everyone has different a different idea in a band of how things should be, but when it's two brothers, then um, you know, ask Angus and Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> And for the, for the short period in the 80s that, that, that John actually left the band, was was that a good thing for you guys to have a bit of time apart to, to actually realise how much you enjoyed each other or working with each other? Yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, in retrospect, um, I think it probably did do us a lot of good from, from both sides. Uh, we, uh, we did exactly that. We, we came to realise that we, uh, we really did want to work together. And um, and have done it ever since, and and uh, successfully without without um, you know the old uh, the, the arguments that you have when you're young they, they don't really happen the same way at all. Mm -hmm. You get older and wiser, you <laughs> sort of know what buttons not to push, and and, uh, and you listen much more to uh, to another point of view. Um, but John had, uh, it was a really good experience for him too, getting out of the band. He, he did other things, you know, joined the party boys and started the Bombers. Yes, yes. And he had a whole, a whole wealth of musical experience outside the Angels. But for, for me too, Rick, that period of the Angels was also very special because Bobby Spencer and you seemed to have a real musical connection as well. The the guitars at, through those records that you guys made and, and when you played with Bob was, was also something very special. Yeah, um, I actually I spoke to Bob only yesterday actually and we were reminiscing about some of that. Um, we did have a definite connection. We, we wrote a lot of songs together. Um, Bob just, uh, you know, I always admired him as a musician, as a guitar player, uh, right from when we first met him at, at Checkers in probably 1976 or something. And uh, um, he first showed me a couple of chords that I didn't, didn't know about <laughs> on the guitar. Um, uh, but I didn't. Until he joined the band, I didn't know what a good writer he was. Mm, and, yeah, um, indeed. Uh, he wrote some stunning guitar riffs, which, uh, uh, you know, we, we uh, put lyrics to, and, you know, that became, became some really good songs that we recorded together. Folks, folks will, uh, will obviously know you and John primarily from the Angels, but, but if folks aren't familiar with what you two do as the Brewster Brothers, it really is quite different. But there's, I think the, the thing for me that I find really interesting, and, and even back to the Moonshine Jug and String Band, Rick, is there's a, a musical thread that runs through your music that, that even, I, I, I would defy any Angels fan to, to come to a, a Brewster Brothers gig and not have the time of their life because they will love what you play even though it's so far removed from from the Angels in a in a sonic sort of sense. Yeah, it is, and uh, we found that throughout doing the you know, from when when we started the Brewster Brothers in two thousand whenever um, it's been a constant that we get Angels fans coming. Uh, Firstly, probably out of curiosity, but um, uh, they're actually 
you know, they'll come talk to us at the end of the gig and say, look, we, we like this stuff just as much as the Angels. And these can be guys in leather jackets and tattoos. And they love it. That's great. So, um, but it's also an opportunity to show the the Angels fans what a great singer John is, and, and he really is. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Uh, I, I just love sitting back in the Bruce Brothers and listening to his uh, his vocals. It's, it's a really clear voice. Uh, and when he does Dylan, it's, um, I know we're not, we're not doing Dylan in the Cabaret Festival, but... We've, we've recorded a, an album of Bob Dylan, uh, mainly for John because he's such a fan, has been all his life, and so inspired by Bob Dylan. We did a whole album of his songs, and we we uh, always play some of his songs on stage in Brewster Brothers. Um, but he, uh, he 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 either he, he sounds close to Dylan in a way, but. Um, He's got something else as well. When he sings a song like Just Like a Woman, um, it uh, makes your hair stand on end. It's great. Yes, indeed, wholeheartedly agree. And uh, you, you guys do do those Dylan tunes very well. Just just one story I just wanted to ask you before we finish off, Rick. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you know something like the show you're going to do at the Cabaret Festival gives you the opportunity to, to tell some stories behind the tunes and the experiences people are familiar with with your careers. But but one thing that I've, I find really fascinating way back in the uh, the early days in Adelaide that people may have forgotten about, but you guys were the support band for, for Chuck Berry. You were his backing band. Yeah, we were support and backing band. That's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was scary. Uh, <laughs> It really was for me. Uh, I, so I was hired as the piano player. Wow. And I'd, I'd never played rock and roll piano in my life. So I was signed right in the deep end. <laughs> I, uh, I went, when we got the, got the gig, I went straight around to a, a uh, friend of Chris Bailey's, Peter Beale, who um, was a, a great piano player. And said, quick, teach me how to play Chuck Berry. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I spent a few hours with him and he just showed me the ropes and I went home and rehearsed fu furiously. Fantastic, that's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Spencer will be joining you uh, in the Brothers, Angels and Demons show when uh, you've got to... Uh, Got some other musicians in there that we're familiar with. Uh, Polly Polites is a great piano player from Adelaide that everybody knows. Uh, everybody knows and loves here. Yes, yeah, certainly is. We, we, I, I uh, hadn't experienced that until last week when we rehearsed, and then he came along to the Beach House Cafe, um, just like as a guest. But he brought his keyboard, so he played with us all night there too. Um, yeah, it was fantastic. He's, uh, Lovely guy, great musician. So, uh, that's that's going to be a, a, a quite an asset and quite something different for the uh, for the cabaret festival show. So, so what's uh, what's in the pipeline for the rest of the year with uh, with the angels with that Mr. Gleason character? I just just before I answer that, I, I want to mention Mick too, and I I cannot remember his second name because I haven't met him before either. But oh, Mick Marina, yeah, your drummer, yeah, yeah, again, wonderful. Uh, with John and I feel so privileged uh, through Brewster Brothers. We've met this network of great players who play with us from time to time, depending where we are. Uh, it's just a wonderful thing. After all these years of being in, in one band only, it's, well, for me, um, it's just opened up a whole new world. Um, but, yeah, later in the year with Dave Gleason, um we have plans, but I'm not at liberty to talk about them. You know, nothing's confirmed at this stage. We've got a, a new album to release. That's in the can now, just waiting to um, for final touches and get a release date together. But that was a great project for us. Magnificent! It'll be it'll be wonderful to hear some new tunes. Yeah, yeah, it's been. A uh, really good experience recording this this album with Dave and 
Nick Norton on drums. Um, just really fast, a lot of spontaneity. As a result, it just went down faster than any Angels album we've ever recorded. Um, and no fuss, just bang, 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 um, writing songs in the studio. Um, it was great. And we're really happy with it. Look, very much look forward to hear that and, and always look forward to uh, to you guys playing with the Angels in Adelaide. If if folks have not seen Dave Gleeson with Rick Brewster's Angels, uh, it is it is something to behold. You guys are really having the time of your life, and and it rubs off on the crowd. And uh, you will you will really have a ball coming to see you guys. I, gu I guarantee it to anybody. Yeah, it's true. It all comes out the speakers. It does indeed. <laughs> all right, Rick, thank you so much for saying hello. I really appreciate your time. It's been a, a great pleasure to say hello. And 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 the the brothers, angels, and demons. Uh, run at the uh, the Cabaret Festival is going to be something very special as I said when we started our chat and I'm I'm so much looking forward to it it's going to be uh, going to be a great night I know it right thanks Rick can you do a quick tag for me mate yeah my my program is called sitting in a bar in Adelaide sitting in a bar in Adelaide yeah, yeah. if you could do me something along the lines of this is Rick Brewster and you're listening to sitting in a bar in Adelaide or whatever pops into your head whenever you're ready okay and you're listening to Sitting in a Bar in Adelaide. Thank you so much, mate. Again, I appreciate your time and uh, all the best. Look forward to seeing you uh, back in Adelaide very soon. Great. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.